All right, good. I'm three quarters of the way through my walk, and I decided that I would stop and just film a little clip to give you a warning that this is a very rambling on conversation with myself. So, you may want to just not watch it, or please don't feel badly if you just click out of it at any point. These, these come walk with me have two purposes. And quite frankly, the first purpose is for me to figure out where I'm going in life. And the second is to share with you my life as an artist and what excites me. Enjoy if you watch it or don't, whatever. Whatever your experience is, is perfectly fine. When the leaves started to change this year, something became clear to me. And that is that when I was thinking that I only had possibly 10 autumns left in my life, my energy level dropped significantly I began to feel a bit of despair. Two, two feelings that I am not used to. And I promptly realized that I'd already, back in March, or certainly after, after the flood, the trauma of the flood, and losing all my artwork, I decided I would get strong again, maintain my health in a way that uh, that I needed to for being over 70. And that I would really focus on all the things that were on my to-do list that get, got put off because I was dealing with life. I'm walking a little bit later today, so there are a lot more cars going by. Uh, and I decided at that time that I would, I would live 30 more years. And it changed so much because 30 more autumns, I had 30 more autumns, 30 more seasons of that wonderful wind coming through and the smells and the, the light and just thriving in that most special month of October, the month that I was born in and that I've always been grateful to have been born in. So I noticed that it was easier to let go of things that I had put too much importance on Maybe at one point in my life it was important to put oh, energy into certain things. But now was the time to really, really pay attention to the lessons I'd learned along the way. And as an artist, my life now is more exciting than it's ever, ever been. And now, I had 30 more years in my mind. I mean, I could, I could drop dead today. I could drop dead on the way back or in two minutes. You know, one of these cars that goes by might come by and just wipe me out. But, but I also might have 30 more years. I would then be approaching my 103rd birthday and thanks to my neighbor, Irene, who 
who introduced me to a number of individuals, mainly women, who are over a hundred and still very, very active. Very, very, well, as active as one might be able to be in over a hundred, but they're still contributing to the world. They're still exploring, they're still making plans. And the idea of oh, Dr. Gladys, can't remember the last name now, but when I heard her interviewed, and she was 103 during the interview, and she said that she had a 10-year plan. And I thought, holy cow, you know, 103 having a 10-year plan. Well, then I needed to start thinking about living another 40 years. And I thought, okay, in my head, I will disregard that as just being pie in the sky. So I thought I would be much more reasonable and count on 30 years. So I have to have a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan, and a 30-year plan. And to be quite honest, I've never had any kind of a plan. So this is putting me into new territory, very new territory. And it's pretty uncomfortable because I need to be organized. I love the grasses, especially when the sun shines through them, or shines on them, and they're silhouetted against darks. They're just delightful. Look at all those patterns and variations of shape. Really, I know I say it a lot, but it's just so true that nature gives us every color we might want, every shape we might want, every pattern we might want, every color combination, at least I might want. Every line there's some man-made wiring in that shot. Just stunning. Oh, I love the textures of these worn signs and all the labeling that goes on on these telephone poles. This is a good example of how if I were to draw this realistically, just as it is, it would be horrendous. Look at the position of the big tree trunk behind the strong Y shape. Like, do you see anything else? No, it's a very interesting Y shape. But, you know, maybe putting it like that would be a bit better. Then I'm looking at other things too, and it acts as being the sixth plane of making me feel more like I'm standing right there, which of course I am, but maybe it helps make use feel like you're standing right there looking into the forest, all those great lines of tree trunks. Whereas if it's here, it's almost like a do not enter sign. Or it's a weird kind of mask with horns. I mean, the, the trunk, it's almost like when you take a photograph of people, a group of people and somebody has a tree coming out of the top of their head. Okay, look at the difference. 
I'm standing in exactly the right place, just simply creating a different found composition in the landscape. A little bit of a tree that was blown off of its branch and fell onto the road. I also notice the change in color. That's not light, that's something on the on the road, the asphalt. Now there's this that has a wonderful selection of seven leaves. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. There are eight. But the pattern, because one is right on top of another, it merges with that one. So it's really creating seven shapes there. How different that is from this single leaf that's just two feet away from the first one. Very different compositions. Oh, maybe ten steps further along. Look at the difference that it makes from all these other little bits of, well, they're acorns that have been crushed and they fall into the crevices Very subtle, early changes of color. How can that be useful in a painting that you might be doing? Little spots, tiny little flecks of red, berries, accents.